and welcome to our YouTube channel The Concepts of ICT. In this lesson we are going to discuss about the operating systems. So this is going to be the second part of the, the lesson series operating systems. In the previous lesson we discussed what is an operating system, what are the types of operating systems and some examples for operating systems. So in this lesson we are going to discuss what are the functionalities of an operating system. So when we discuss about the functionalities, we can divide them into main two categories as uh, providing a user interface and managing the resources of the computer. Let's first discuss about the uh, managing the computer resources part and then we'll discuss about the providing user interface part. So when we discuss about the managing the resources of the computer, there are six main categories or there are six main functionalities that it performs. We call them process management, memory management, file management, network management, security management and device management. Those are the six main functionalities performed by the operating system regarding the controlling or managing the resources of the computer. So let's see what each of these is. What is process management? What is a process simply? We define a process as a program in execution or a part of a program that is currently in execution. If you have gone through the task manager, you must have seen there are hundreds of processes that are currently running inside the computer. Not only the software that we are running, there are hundreds of other processes as well, with the Windows processes and the background processes as well. There are so hundreds of processes that are running at the moment. You can go and check your task manager. You see there are hundreds of processes running at the moment. So we know that a process to be executed, it should be taken to the uh, CPU or the, the Arithmetic and Logic Unit, ALU. That is where the processes are executed. So, how many processes do we have? I mean, how many processors or cores do we have inside a computer? For example, let's take an i3 machine. So, there are two cores inside the computer. Two processors. And each process has two threads so it can simultaneously process four processes so at, uh, if, if you go through the task manager there are hundreds of other processes as well and we see that all these things are happening at the same time there's no lagging if you are running a, a big programs you will feel some lagging but otherwise there's no such uh, lagging in your computer processing so, what happens is, the operating system manages the processes. It decides which process to be taken to the ALU for processing or the CPU for processing. It decides what, which to be stayed, which to be kept inside the RAM, which to be taken for processing and which should be exited from the processor or from the RAM. It decides everything to increase the efficiency of the computer, to increase the speed and to increase the utilization of the central processing unit. So it keeps working. The, process, the, the operating system decides everything. So this is what process management is. It decides which to be taken to the processor, which to be taken out of the processor and which to be kept inside the RAM. All these things are decided by the operating system. So now let's move on to the next part, which is the memory management. What is the memory of a computer? Or we call it the main memory. The other name that we usually use is the RAM. So how does the operating system manage the RAM? We know that the RAM is a, a limited resource. We don't have terabytes of RAM in a usual computer, a PC. We have just 2, 4, 8, 16 like uh, RAMs inside a computer. 
So it is a limited resource. So when we run a program, it should be loaded to the RAM prior to the execution. So uh, not only their programs, the data related to that program also should be loaded to the RAM. So uh, as this is a limited resource, the operating system should decide again which to be kept, which processes, which programs, which data should be kept inside the RAM. There's another concept called the virtual memory, which is a part of the hard disk that is used as the main memory. So the operating system decides which to be swapped to that virtual memory and which to be kept inside the RAM. So it decides on this on all of these things. That's what we call the memory management. Okay. Now let's move on to the next part, the file management. What is a file? It is simply a collection of data. It can be a document, an audio file, a video file, an image, whatever thing. So the operating system gives the ability to create these files, to rename these, to name these, to move these, to arrange them in a particular order, to create folders, to do many things like this. So that is what file management is. And there's another concept called the extension of files when we discuss about files. So the operating system use these extensions to get to know the files what type of a file that is and what is the software that should be used to open these files things like that and how they are stored inside the computer and this is what file management is and again uh, the other uh, the next topic is network management what is network management the operating systems give the ability to create networks or simply we call that uh, gives the ability to get connected to a network or simply to create networks. So it gives the ability to share your information, to get information from other computers, other devices inside the computer, to send the data. For all these functions, is the operating system gives the ability. So that is what network management is. Security management. What is security management? It secures your computer, your device from the external, from the threats that come from uh, the external sources. It can be coming from the networks where there is a firewall which protects you from the external threats that comes from the networks. Not, the, not all the threats, but it blocks some of the threats, the firewall. And again, it gives the ability to create passwords, the usernames and passwords or accounts and passwords to your computer. So that will protect you from the, the unauthorized access to your computer. So that is what security management is. And device management. What is device management? The operating system gives the ability to communicate with the external devices through ports. So how do you communicate? How do you simply communicate with the other devices that are connected to the computer? There is a firmware called the device driver. It is a simple software that gives the commands, that tells the commands that should be used in communicating with the device. So all these device drivers are installed on the operating system. So the operating system then, then communicates with these devices that are connected to the computer. So that is what device management is. All these processes, all these functionalities are handled by mainly the operating system. Now let's move on to the other topic which is providing a user interface. So when we discuss about the user interfaces, there are two types of user interfaces. We call them the command line interface or CLI and the graphical user interface or the GUI. The most common user interface that we find in 
the modern computers or modern operating systems is the graphical user interface. But in the in the early ages, we had the command line interfaces. If you have experience about the DOS operating system, it used a command line interface. It simply is a black interface and you have to give commands in written to run whatever thing, to do whatever thing using the computer. You have to remember all these commands to use the computer. So it is a bit difficult task. Then we started using the graphical user interfaces. In graphical user interfaces, when we discuss about the graphical user interfaces, there are four main components in these interfaces. We call them the windows, icons, menus and pointers or we simply call them WIMP W I M P Windows Icons Menus Pointers. In it in all these graphical user interfaces we find these four components. What is a window? It is the one that opens when you click on a folder or whatever the software. It is a window. It is simply called a window. And uh, icons there are so many icons for folders, for documents, for whatever they find. They use icons to identify uh, these files. Menus, when you go to Windows, you find several menus. File menu, edit menu, view menu, so there are so many menus. It makes it easier for the user to access the functionalities of the software and all these things. Menus and pointers. What's the point? It simply points a pixel in the display. We have mouse pointers which uh, makes it easy to access files. So these four components we find in the GUIs. So when we compare these two, the GUI is the easier one to use. It is user friendly. If, if, uh, if we are given a command line interface, it will be a bit difficult to use because you have to know all the commands that that are used in the in that particular interface or that particular uh, operating system. If you have experience about the command prompt, that is a type of uh, a command line interface. So that is what we are going to learn in this lesson. We discuss about the operating systems, the functionalities of the operating systems and we divided that into two main categories as uh, managing the computer hardware or the managing the basically managing the resources of the computer and providing a user interface under managing the resources of, of the computer we discuss about main six topics process management memory management file management security management network management and device management and then we discuss about the interfaces, types of interfaces provided by the operating systems. They are, we discuss about two main interfaces, command line interface and the graphical user interface. So hope you learned everything about the operating systems up to now. If you have any questions, you can use the comment section. So that's all for today. If you want to learn more about the concepts of ICT, please subscribe my channel. So thanks for watching again and see you on the next lesson. Thank you.